Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I'm Brett Papa, and in today's lesson, I'm going to review one of the questions I get asked the most when it comes to just overall guitar playing, and that is, what can I do to get better? <laughs> nice broad question for you. I would say the number one thing I notice people need help with the most is rhythm. Whether it's rhythm guitar, like chords and muting and arpeggiating lines and all that stuff, or it's rhythm in the solos. And the both of them go hand in hand together. If you're a great rhythm guitar player, a la chords, you're gonna be a good lead guitar player too because your sense of time in relation to the other instruments has to be good to be good at rhythm guitar. And so the number one way I have found to, for myself especially, the thing I like to do the most and that's really effective for students is to play with drum grooves. Down in the links below, there's gonna be a link to the drum track I'm using in this particular lesson today. And also it's gonna be at three different tempos because the speed I choose may be too fast or too slow or whatever, or Maybe, just maybe, you want to create a cool song based on this drum loop. You know, you're going to hear this drum beat in thousands of songs, <laughs> so it's going to be perfect. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to give you some basic rhythm ideas to get your rhythm chops better, stuff I like to do. I do this, what I'm showing you, I do this every single day. Everyone, including myself, again, are constantly working on their rhythm chops and their timing. Everyone, regardless whether it's a session musician, great live player, what have you, everyone can always work on their time. So that's what we're gonna do today. And also, if you like this kind of stuff, all of this is brought to you by the products at brettpapa.com. All of these free videos on YouTube are made possible by your support down there. And I'm going to leave a link for a fat discount on the yearly membership, which includes everything I've ever done and also the Tim Pierce courses. And we're adding right now the Corey Congelio Blues courses as well. So check that out in the link below. All right, let's get into the lesson. Okay, so for this tune, we're gonna keep it really simple and we're gonna use three chords, basically an F chord. I love the sound of an F chord without the barring the high E. A lot of times I'll take off the second finger too. <sighs> Something so good about that. Love that. Regular C chord. And then a G chord. G note, G note, and then pretend you're making a C chord right here with these two fingers. Now the cool thing about that is it leaves you open to do a lot of little riffing. And one of the things that we're gonna do is we're basically gonna use the G major pentatonic scale. But we're gonna use these other notes so we can get cool licks like. Or. Right, so it's gonna be a rhythm lesson predominantly, but we're gonna throw a little bit of lead love in there as well. Now the beat is really simple. It's literally just kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. Kick, and that I did that for a very specific reason. It's super simple, right? And it's really easy no matter what your level to be able to start to do something that is gonna work with this, right? So let me play the beat. Here we go. Okay, so as you're hearing, kick, snare, kick, snare. Then there's hi-hats. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So the hi-hats are basically an eighth note subdivision, right? perfect for learning when to get those upstrokes in there too. And I, and I cranked them up a little bit more than you would normally hear hi-hats in a mix, just so you have, you know, extra, that in-between space. Like when, basically the kick and snare would be a metronome. But it's so much easier when you have something in between those two big 
<laughs> notes, right? Or beats. So, right? So you can really start getting those upbeats down. Now, if you're like just like day one rhythm guitar playing, let's do this. Let's just strum on a G chord, right? Here we go. Maybe you do kick, snare. Maybe it's a downstroke and an upstroke, right? Okay, so first thing right off the bat, keep your body moving right? Feel that beat because it's going to help your body and your muscles and everything stay in time. So if you watch players, my favorite thing to do is watch live performances of players. Look at the players. They're always, always, always moving some part of their body, right? No matter what you get, watch a bunch of session guys. They're like the best timekeepers on earth. They're always moving their body or something to feel the pulse of the music to help keep them in time, right? So no matter what, start noticing that when you watch really good players, they're always going to be moving something, a part of their body to the beat, right? So that's super simple, right? But we can start to add something to it. So maybe it's like, you know, it's one, two, three, four, right? And we have those other hi-hats, which would basically be like an upbeat. So you could do something like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, whatever, right? Right, let's try that. Right, so those downbeats, the G chord itself is gonna be on a like a heavy beat, like a kick or a snare. So kick, snare, and kick, snare, and the and would be that in between the kick or the snare, right? Now what I'm doing now is called washboarding. It's literally just hitting everything. Now, at some point we want to nuance our playing a little bit more than that. But in the beginning, if you're having a hard time keeping a beat, I mean, that's as simple as it gets, right? And then you can add another chord. Now, the other thing that we can do is we can just palm mute, right? So again, those upstrokes before I move on is just on that and in between the kick and the snare. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, right? And so forth. So another thing that you can do is just mute like the bass note of a chord. Here we go. Maybe let some punch through. Now check this out. You can accent those notes to a certain degree. 
I can put more emphasis on certain notes, right? So after I've done that a bunch, right, and, and you start, you know, putting different, like if I... See on that, I'm, I'm creating kind of a pulse. Because a lot of times the bass player and stuff like that will start to do that. And it takes a simple, just eighth note muted pattern and it gives it some feel and some movement. You're still really staying with the beat, but you're kind of pulsing a little bit more with the dynamics on how you're picking. Maybe you're letting it a little less muted and a little bit more ring through, but the trick is staying on those. Don't let those notes ring past the hit, right? You want to be right. You know, you don't want to be. There's certain times when you can do that, but if you're trying to create kind of a suction tight groove, you want to make sure that the notes aren't really ringing past those hits be it a kick or a snare or the hi-hat, right? They're short, so it's creating that space where there's a hole where there's no real sound coming in it creates like a whole thing happening, right? Now, one way, once you start getting good at that to break it up, right? So we were just playing on that G. Right? Sometimes it's cool when you've been doing something like that, say you're writing a song, well now let's maybe do an arpeggiated chord, right? And let the notes really ring, like maybe. Right, and maybe you add a little note in there. So all I'm doing I'm taking that F chord and I'm just going down D, right? So I go. Straight down the chord twice. And then on the third time, I just go to the G. Same thing on the C. Right, so maybe it's. Maybe on that last one I go. Right, just hammer on the open D and then G and then into that G chord, right? Okay, so why don't we try something like that with the beat, right? We're gonna do a little palm muting, some stabs in there, and then we're going to do an arpeggiated chord, right? So here we go.
So when you're doing this one, this is gonna be on a kick. And that second one right here is also gonna have a beat, a kick or a snare, right? So you're gonna have a hit, hit. So listen for that to make sure that your arpeggiated line, you're still paying attention to those doom, da, doom, da, do. Cause you wanna be syncing up with that kick and snare. Rhythm is everything. I work on it every day. I'm not the world's greatest rhythm player. You know, it's, it takes practice. You know, all these guys, these session guys, all these people that you hear, right? These incredible players, they practice, practice, practice. They never stop practicing. The session guys are great because they do it 12 hours a day. They are playing to a beat of some kind, whether it's a click or it's a drummer or what have you. There's a constant practicing parts to a beat. And it is just so awesome to be able to really finally learn how, even if you're a novice, right, but can keep time, you can have a great time in a band. People are going to love you in a band if you can keep time. Even if you're not a lead player or whatever, trust me, they would rather have a smoking, really good rhythm player than lead player because you can play songs all day long with somebody who can keep time in a rhythm sense. But if you can't play rhythm and all you can do is play lead, well, you can't really play songs that well. So anyways, and it's about getting those booties on the dance floor shaking. <laughs> so we have, right? Or our, our most basic. Let's practice all the different things we can do. Right? So it's not perfect, right? I'm still practicing it too. I definitely can't talk and play at the same time. For all you people that can sing and play really well at the same time, I got so much respect for you. I mean, I can barely like chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> but to sing, like be in key and play really good, you got skills. I'm just saying it like it is, right? You get like James Hetfield, how on, Dave Mustaine, how on earth? <laughs> Can you do stuff like, even like John Mayer, my God, like the acoustic parts and all that stuff, a lot of respect. So anyways, these are all different things that you can do. Now, once you get that kind of under your belt, then you can add some of those fun little things in there, like the little kind of rhythm fills that would be like. Right? So maybe we're adding like the start with the F chord and the C chord where your second finger is just hammer from an open, right? Now that is basically going to be like that. You're going to be able to hear that, right? So here we go. Maybe it's just... 
All right, maybe you do like a, let's see, like a. All right, so that's a open on the D, hammer two. All right, so I'm going, and then open G, and then A, and then open D. Right, think about going, it's easiest going into that G and you can leave some of those D and G strings open. It's really cool because you're going, you're kind of leading into the notes of that G chord. Now, all that kind of stuff. Second fret. Right, you have these notes. You can hit multiple notes at the same time. So you could do like a G. Right? So I'm sliding on the second fret to the third fret of the D, but I'm plucking the G. So little licks like that starting once you get the feel down start trying to add those things again keeping time right so let's try that Come back this up a little bit See, it's all about practice, all right. Right, so you can tighten up and just do bar chords, same chords, right? Different feel. So on some of those, I'm not hitting on the kick and the snare, I'm coming in on an upbeat rather, rather than going. Right, and I'm using that hi-hat in between that kick and snare to punch in on an upbeat. And it gives a lot of, like Tim Pierce would always say, right? right? If you don't know, he is amazing session guitar player, right? would always say that he likes to play in the upbeats because it creates a bounce to the track, right? So these are all the things that we can start playing with, even with these licks. That's gonna create some, some movement, some feel, right? It's not just... It's got some bounce to it, right? And if you do upbeats, right? Right, let's check that out. Right, see how that has more feel than I'm 
adding some different kind of feels to the rhythm. Some more, it's almost like punctuation, right? Instead of just going blah, 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 and just babbling, you're like, so, and you can know how to play rhythm, <laughs> right? So we go. Now, that's rhythm playing, right? And it's awesome. And you're starting to get a little bit of that lead action with your fills, your rhythm fills. Those add so much like feel and like sound so much more seasoned, right? When you can start to pocket cool in between chord licks, right? So work on those as well. But then also you can totally use this to do lead playing and start simple like take a scale you know like and take maybe that, that g major pentatonic scale and try to pocket in some you know lead licks So what you want to do is when you're doing your lines, especially if the line is like a long line, make sure that some of those notes are landing on those beats, right? So if you're doing a lick like. Right, you want to make sure that you're still paying attention. Now, you don't always have to do this, but if you're using this for an exercise to keep time, Really make sure that you're feeling where those notes are, those kicks, snares, and hi-hats so you can stay in time or pocket with this stuff. So let's try some random ideas. So I'm trying to like accentuate those hits or like bending, doing bends and then coming back into the beat is something I work on all the time because it's not that easy. Like how long can you hang on a bend before you got to come in? How greasy can I make that bend? How long can I like just pull on that bend and before I come back and really am trying to add something to it or, or like trying to bend and do vibrato kind of with a time, right? So let's try that out. Right, so maybe it's. and I'm bending on those beats.
if I were to try to add a lot more notes, can I pocket it? Right, so. So that's the other thing, right? And I go into all this kind of stuff in my membership. Again, that's down below, brettpapa.com, yearly membership. But all that kind of stuff's covered. How to play with the beat, both rhythm and lead. The rhythm stuff is coming. I'm filming all that stuff right now, so it'll be in there soon. But it's gotten me thinking, like, this is everything, you know? Because I've been sitting around here playing for hours every day now, just going, like, this is the most fun thing ever because... Then all you have to do once you get good at a simple drum beat is just change the beat, right? Now maybe it's in three, four, or six, eight, and all of a sudden it's like this woo or, or swung beat, right? Maybe it's a shuffle. And it's learning how to pocket your chord and rhythm playing and lead playing to all those grooves that's really going to take your playing to another place because a lot of us, we get the mechanics right? And we can move our fingers around. Maybe we can bend in tune. Maybe we can do vibrato. But until you put it to a beat, you can't ever get the feel all the way, right? You can do licks like this at home. Like I can work on getting that feel, those little note tweaks. But until I can do those licks to a beat, then it's like, okay, you got some cool licks, but how do they feel? How can you pocket those licks? And that's, I think, the next frontier for guitar players in the intermediate space. If you haven't done this, or if you're wanting to be in a band, you're a young kid, or maybe, you know, you're, you're like sitting on your retirement, like, it's time to get in that band, I always wanted to. Well, sweet, now how are you gonna do that? How are you going to show up to that audition with friends that maybe have been playing in bands for years? What's gonna make them want you to be in the band? I'll tell you what's gonna make them want you to be in the band is if you're a freaking rock solid rhythm player, number one. Number two, if you can play killer rhythm, maybe throw some fills in there in between, that's like, ooh, wow, he's, he's pretty good. If you can do rock solid rhythm, you can do the fills in the rhythm, and then you can pocket. It doesn't even have to be fast. Let's just say Gilmore speed, which, I mean, do you need to be more than Gilmore? <laughs> Gilmore speed blues licks pocketed with the band. Dude, you're, or dudette, you're in. Like, you're hired. Let's go play, right? Here's the song list. Bam, there you go. I mean, unless you're playing like, you know, Van Halen and all that other kind of stuff, which again is just the same thing with more practice and repetition. So you can, you know, the beats are a little faster. The phrasing's a little swankier, like, but it's all based on the same thing and has the same starting point is getting that drum groove. You know, again, I'm gonna have tons of this kind of stuff in the membership with all sorts of different feels, like just tons and tons and tons and tons of different drum grooves. All that kind of stuff is coming soon because it's like, this is what everybody should be learning really to get their playing up to you know, creating songs, being in a band, being able to improvise well, being able to sit in in a situation with the band, whether it's like, hey, come up and jam, and just being so comfortable with playing with grooves that you can automatically, you know, fit in with the band and feel the groove that the band's playing. You know, maybe that they're lacking a little bit, but you can match the drummer, right? You can like feel where he's at. It's like, okay, maybe he's not the most pocketed guy on earth, but if I can play with him, and listen to what he's doing and fit into what he or she is doing, that's gonna make everything sound better. Then, if you get into a band with like some real heavy hitters, and they're like, come up and jam, you're gonna feel what it really feels like to have an amazing you know, rhythm section behind you. And if you can like seize the day and play really well with that, you're gonna have more fun than you've ever had in your life. All right, so, 
Thank you once again for joining me here at brettpapa.com. Well, I say brettpapa.com, but the Brett Papa YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell. Again, the drum tracks are gonna be in the description box below. I'm also gonna leave the yearly membership link below. Maybe there's gonna be a little discount in there. You gotta click the link to check it out. I don't know, could be. So check that out. Again, that's all of my courses. And then that also has got the Tim Pierce and the Corey Congelio stuff is being added right now as well too. So all that comes into the membership. There's like, I don't even know how many videos now. There's over a thousand videos, I think, with all this stuff that's going to be in there soon. So it's plenty for years to come. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the continued support. We'll catch you next time.